Hey friends, it's Jasmine and I hope that you all are doing well. Today I wanted to do a little bit of a book review and that book review is going to be Becoming Witch, Back to the Basics by Cricket Song. So first, I want to apologize if you hear my dogs barking. It seems like every time I go to film, uh, they like to say hi. So if you hear my dogs in the background, um, yes. I am the mother of dogs. So just bear with me. Also, I'm sorry about this lighting situation. Um, because of the time of day that I have to film, uh, the sun is a little offensive. So I did the best I could, but I apologize about the lighting. It's not the best, I know, just bear with me. My name is Jasmine. I am a practicing witch and I am very excited to do a review of this book from my perspective and from my lens. Cricket Song has a wonderful channel, Lunar Wisdom, which I will be linking down below. I will also be linking where you can get this book yourself if you are interested in having this book. I'm drinking out of my Krampus Tis the Season Tumbler. Just something cute, something fun. Um, something kind of unsettling. So here's the front of the book and the back. And this book, Becoming Witch, is the book for witches who are seeking to reestablish their witchcraft practice after a life transition or period of stagnation, but don't know where to begin. In this unique and interesting book, Cricket Song provides 13 chapters written specifically to guide you through your process of setting a stable foundation. So some of the main things that you're gonna find in this book are exploring the basics of witchcraft, discovering your skills with magic, and renewing your confidence in your power and sovereignty. With the turn of the last page, you will understand how your reasons for being on the journey to becoming witch. Now, the author, Cricket Song, isn't she just so cute? So it's taken me a little while to actually make this video just because I wanted to really spend the time with this book. I wanted to really sit with this book and reflect on this book. I don't like to do book reviews where I just rush through it. So I really wanted to take the time to, like I said, sit with it and read it from cover to end. Um, and I did a live video for like kind of my first impressions um, with this book. And first impression wise, like I said in the live video, I absolutely love this cover art. I like the simplicity of the book and I like how the back is formatted and I appreciate how the summary really just gives you a solid idea of what this book is about. If I was at a bookstore and saw this book, Becoming Witch, um, I would probably grab it right up off the shelf and they say not to judge a book by its cover, but I think that we all, I think we all do to some extent. I think that this cover for me personally, the aesthetic of this cover would be what first draws me in. And maybe that's just me because I literally have this tattooed um, as part of my sleeve here. I think that the cover would definitely draw me in, but I like how the back is simple. It's not too wordy and it just kind of gives you a general description of this book and what you are going to access from this book. But before we get any further into this, I want to talk about transitions. So this book um, is kind of catered to witches who have gone through some sort of transition. So that might be, you know, a death in the family. That might be a move or a marriage or having children. But it's kind of catered to a witch who has taken a break from their practice and then returns to their practice. This could be like a period of stagnation where maybe you haven't been practicing or maybe you have felt a bit of a rut in your practice and you just don't really feel turned on and excited about practicing magic. And that is who this book is catered towards. Coming witch back to the basics, there are a lot of chapters and things in this book that I feel like are really nice, especially for a new practitioner. But I also think even as an intermediate or advanced, whatever those words 
mean. Um, a more seasoned witch, I think you can also get so much out of a back to the basics kind of book because it is up to us to constantly reevaluate what our foundation is. And that I think is probably what I liked most about this book is that it is about kind of setting the solid foundation and building a solid foundation in the craft. And I think that when we go through transitions, that foundation of our craft um, is mutable and can change. It's not necessarily fixed and constant. So while we might have certain beliefs um, or values, those values and beliefs are always up for question. And I feel like personally, as a witch, we should always be reevaluating and seeking out higher knowledge and our own truth. Now, in the live video that I did, I read through a little bit of this book as a first impression, and I really liked how as soon as you open up the book, we have a quote here from Aleister Crowley. In order to dare, we must know. In order to will, we must dare. We must will to possess empire and reign, we must be silent. I really enjoyed that quote there in the beginning of the book. So taking a look here, and if you wanna pause this video, if you want to pause this video to take a look here at the book contents. I'll read them for you. So chapter one is words hold power. Chapter two is altered states. Chapter three is the gods. Chapter four, magic. Chapter five, a witch's honor. I especially really enjoyed chapter five. Let me just say that. Um, chapter six, familiar and unfamiliar spirits. Chapter seven, the elementals and elements. Chapter eight, sacred space. Chapter nine, magical tools. Chapter 10, as above, so below. Chapter 11, spell crafting and casting. Chapter 12, the witch's year. Chapter 13, what lies beyond. So as you can see, um, these 13 chapters, while there may only be 13 chapters, I definitely think that there's so much information packed within these chapters. So while this book is very much catered towards a practitioner who is returning to their craft um, after a period of stagnation or transmutation or transformation or transition or whatever, I also think that a beginner witch would get a lot out of this book as well. So if you are listening to this video or, or watching, I guess I should say, and you are new to witchcraft, don't feel like you have to be a seasoned witch in order to get something out of this book. This book has lots of information in it. Um, I also really enjoyed the part of this book where they talk about where Cricket Song talks about past life regression. And there's some really beautiful like poems and invocations here in this book as well that I also feel like make this book very much worthwhile. There's also some really nice exercises in this book. This one is about establishing sacred space. I found this particular chapter um, really nice because I felt like, you know, I had a pretty good idea of how to establish sacred space, but there's just something I think beneficial to relearn information that you thought that you previously already knew. Um, because I think it's easy for us, especially seasoned witches, to think that, you know, oh, we've already learned that. So that's not for us anymore. But I think that one of the nice things about back to the basics or beginner sort of books is that we get a different perspective. Um, so I love books like this. Also have this um, exercise on how to craft anointing oil. So you can see what I mean by, you know, if you are a beginner, I think this book would have a lot of great information for you. We have another exercise here, and this one is setting an altar. More great information. And one of the other things that I really liked about reading this book, um, and maybe it's because I know, I feel like I know Cricket Song. Um, you know, we kind of met online and have become friends. And I have enjoyed their YouTube channel well before, because I think they've been on YouTube for 
quite a bit. I'm not exactly sure how long, but they have lots of great content on their YouTube channel. And I've really enjoyed watching their content, watching their channel and seeing how they've evolved through their transitions and their changes. I know that um, they had a very big move um, fairly recently. I mean, not like yesterday, but they literally went from East Coast to West Coast. And seeing how some of that has changed and altered their practice from the spirits of the land to how they feel connected to the seasons and cycles has been really cool to see. And that's why I think that remaining mutable in our practice is so important. We also have some stuff in here about the witch's year or the wheel of the year. I think this is great information as well. And I think that for a lot of us, this is very much a foundation or a base level of our practice, attuning ourselves with the wheel of the year. And I think that as a witch myself, who has undergone a lot of different transitions and, and um, transitions and transmutations, okay? I think that the Wheel of the Year for me personally as a witch, this is very much a foundation for me. So in periods of time where I feel like I'm kind of stuck in a rut, if I can attune myself with the cycles of the earth, even if that's lighting a simple candle for an equinox or a solstice, that definitely helps me feel more connected to my practice. There's also an exercise in here for self-initiation. I think this is something that we don't always see in books of today. So I think this was really nice to have here in this book. And some topics on this chapter are, what is your purpose for identifying as witch? How do you live as witch? What is it you seek to manifest in your life? How will you work to manifest this? And what is some common focus of your spells and magical workings? I think that these questions are incredibly thought provoking and whether you are a beginner witch or a seasoned practitioner, I think that we should be constantly asking ourselves these hard hitting questions that provoke us to think about our own craft. I think that's, you know, something that is really a value in this book. I also like how there's a chart about the realms of existence in this book. I'll hold it here for a second. So if you wanna take a screenshot or whatever you can. I really enjoyed that chart as well. There's that past life regression that I was talking about in this book. This was super cool. Super, super cool. I think that past life regression is something that is talked about and heard about, but there's not a lot of content, I feel like, about this particular topic. I'm gonna read you a little bit of this visualization from the past life regression. You're slowly you walking are... down a long corridor. You feel a cool breeze on your skin, which carries with it the scent of fresh rosemary. There is a dim light illuminating your way, and as you walk, your footsteps echo off the walls. The corridor is so long, you cannot see where it leads, but you are not afraid. As you realize that you are not alone, someone is walking with you to protect you on your journey. You look to your left and see your companion. Who is it? Is that not powerful? Are those words not so intentional? As I was reading that, could you hear the power of those words? Because when I read it, it kind of took me back a little bit and um, I really enjoyed it. There's also an index of exercises here towards the back of the book. So if you wanna kind of take a look at that and screenshot this. We have a little about the author page so you can get to know Cricket Song um, if you're not already familiar, which if you're not already familiar, like, get familiar because they are just such an incredible person and such an amazing witch. So definitely worth supporting their work. And you can kind of get to know them here in the back of this book. Also, you can get to know them by checking out their YouTube channel, which I will be linking, like I said, below. All in all, I really liked this book. And if I had to give this book like a rating, um, 
I would probably give it a 9 out of 10. And the reason why I would give it a 9 and not a 10 is simply just because I think that this book is wonderful for any witch of any experience level. I think that this book is delightful and it definitely had me wanting to continuously turn the page and read the next page. I enjoyed each chapter and that's why it's taken me so long to post this video because I really wanted to read every chapter and really soak in the information of this book. And I apologize if you feel like I'm being a little bit vague, but I don't want to give too much away from the book, you know? I would personally purchase this book. If I saw this book in a store, I would absolutely purchase it. One, because I love Cricket Song and I want to support them and I think that they are a witch worth listening to. Um, but two, um, the outside of the book for me is very captivating. Three, I think that this book provides a lot of great information that, like I said, can be good for a beginner or an experienced witch. And I like how this is the only book I know of that is really catered to a witch who has gone through some, okay, and helping them get back into their practice. Because I feel like on a spiritual level, a lot of us sometimes have periods of stagnation where maybe we're not doing our daily practice or maybe we're not connecting with our spirits, gods, guides, whatever you want to call them. This book is kind of bringing you back to understanding your own foundation, understanding your own roots, so that way you can further connect to your practice as, you know, this idea that becoming witch, we are constantly becoming witch. As witches, yes, we are witches, but no matter what we do in the craft, it's witchy because we are witches. And I really liked that aspect of this book. I feel like this book is very affirmative as well. Like it's very much reaffirming the fact that no matter what you do or in what part of your life you are in, you are magical and you are witchy. And I think that that's a message that a lot of people truly need to hear. So I really liked that. If I have one complaint, and if anything, this is really more of a compliment. But if I have one complaint, I wish the book was longer. I really enjoyed reading this book. And so the reason why it's not a 10 is I would have loved to have more than just 13 chapters. However, 13 is a great number. And I, I really enjoyed this. Um, as you can see, I've kind of like dog-eared some pages and it's been in my purse and I've taken it with me to work and to the store and, you know, all over to friends' houses. And my friends have kind of like bibliomancy kind of through this book a little bit. So it's gotten a little bit uh, of a wear and tear on it. But I think that's a sign that this book is worth turning the pages. So um, I hope that you all have enjoyed this review. I would recommend that you get this book. Um, if anything, it's a great back to the basics um, reintroduction. And it's nice to hear another witch's perspective. And you will truly be able to hear Cricket Song's personality and voice in the pages of this book. Like literally when I was reading this book, I was hearing it in her voice. So that is super cool that that was able to be translated into the book. Um, and yeah, so I would give this book a 9 out of 10. I highly, highly recommend that you get this book for yourself. And um, if you you know, have any questions um, about this book or comments of your own, I would love to hear what you think of this book as well. And I would love to have a little bit of a dialogue about um, some of these chapters, like The Witch's Honor, for instance, I think is an especially great chapter. So um, major props to Cricket Song and thank you for making this book. And until next time, guys, blessed be.